We've been looking at uh, how uh, Jesus went viral. Viral just means a rapid transfer of information among people. Right now, it's very popular to go viral. You want your, uh, your content right, to go viral so you can make lots of internet money. Right? You want your product to go viral or whatever. But Jesus went viral. People thronged him uh, because of his kindness. He was uncompromisingly kind to other people, uh, to people that others... Uh, ostracized that he was kind to the woman caught in the act of adultery he was kind to the woman that had five husbands and the person she was living with was not her husband she was the first person that he revealed his messiahship to was her he was kind to the thief hanging up on the cross and as he's hanging on the cross he was even kind to the people that put him there and said father forgive them for they know not what they do that he was a lamb he was a shepherd and people came to him not just because of the miracles of that he did but because the person that he was he carried the love of God but he was also a lion he was also vicious he was their defender he was their teacher he taught them this is how the kingdom works this is what heaven's like this is how you get there and then we spent a whole Sunday and talked about how the fact he answered the question what happens when we die it's the question all of us the most important question that we all want to know is uh, am I going to come back as a butterfly Am I going to be a lizard, right? Am I reincarnated? And they had adopted these different thoughts because there was no answer for what happens uh, to, to you when you die. Jesus came and showed that, that to be absent of the body, to be present with the Lord, it's actually better. That, that there is a kingdom, that there is there's an unseen reality. And what Jesus really came to deal with was not just our temporary problems. The Bible says that there are principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And he came to, to upend all of that stuff. The Bible says he destroyed them. He openly spoiled them, paraded them through downtown eternity, paraded them through hell, took the keys to death, hell and the grave, arose from the grave. And then he came and visited all of his disciples and said, behold, I am alive. I'm alive forevermore. Showed him the holes in his hands and on his sides. I mean, y'all know he's still alive. And, and we see as he's about to leave the earth and he's about to go back up into heaven, this is where we're going to be looking at the next few moments here. As he's about to go back up into heaven, this is in Acts chapter 1, verse number 4. He said, uh, it, it says that they were assembled together with them. He's with them. This is after his resurrection. He needed to stick around and see his disciples. So he stayed around 40 days and he uh, spent time with them. And he told them, he commanded them, he said, do not depart from Jerusalem. Wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you've heard from me. John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from here. And Jesus is the baptizer of fire. He actually says, I baptize you in fire and the Holy Spirit. In other words, once Jesus goes back, the Holy Spirit comes down. The Holy Spirit is that fire that's in your belly that just keeps eternity in the back of your mind and heart. You may, you know, uh, skydive, Rocky Mountain Clyde, two more, seven seconds, bull named Fu Manchu, you know, you know all those songs. You, you may ride the boat and shoot the low, low score and kill the big buck and all that, but there is a fire in you that is the Holy Spirit that says, this is not my home. I'm just passing through. These are not my kids. They're his kids. They're instruments in his kingdom. And that fire of the Holy Spirit, number one, just keeps eternity in your as your compass. I mean, I know sometimes it does, we need the, that, that bringing back that true north that we are just passing through. If you happen to live to be 60 or 80 or 100, I mean, I know compared to eternity, it, the Bible says it's like a vapor, that your life is like a vapor. It's just, it's here today, it's gone tomorrow. So the fire, Jesus said, listen, don't you leave till the Holy Spirit comes. Whenever he comes, he's going to put a fire in your belly, in your bones for eternity. He goes on and he says, but when they've come together, they ask him, they said, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to, he said to them, it's not... 
for you to know the times of the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be witnesses. Everybody say witnesses. Second thing the Holy Spirit does is that fire in your belly just makes you uh, want to tell. And you don't have to know all the scriptures. You know, is my mic going out or something? It sounds like. I heard this happen last week. I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't going to say that's what I heard. I it wasn't loose, but no, just pray for it in Jesus' name. When he had spoken these things, uh, uh, wait, it says, it's not for you to know the season of the towers, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You will be a witness to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And when he had spoken this, these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So now Jesus is starting to leave and while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here gazing up into the heaven? This same Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. I mean, y'all know he went up as absolute victor. He went up as absolute victor. I think sometimes we look at the condition of our world and we think, wow, there's a lot going on. And make no mistake who the victor is. It is Jesus. He went up as absolute victor. And in like manner, he will come back in absolute victor. He will come back in a form. And I'll show you in just a minute. And what we just read in, in Revelations. Some people get scared by Revelations. But like I said, it is the one book that there's actually a blessing for you reading it. The reason that there's a blessing in reading it is all of us have been in situations that we weren't prepared. All of us have sat down to take a test that we weren't ready for. Crap. I studied chapter four, but it's on chapter five. Or you just didn't study at all. How many of y'all have been there before? And all the blood runs out of your head, down into your feet, and it's just like, I am not prepared for this. We have all seen uh, teams that are excellent. Like him or lump him, Saban is a machine. That baby knows how to win. But just because you're an amazing fighter or an amazing athlete, if you don't prepare for your opponent, they will kick your butt. And we have all seen teams that were the better team, but they showed up nonchalant and they just weren't ready. We have all done the, the low crawl on our floor in our underwear because somebody knocked on the door that we were not ready for, right? The TV's on. They're looking through the window and you're hiding behind the couch and your tidy whities and they know you're there because the dog's barking, right? The TV's on. You got to answer the door. How I many y'all know the house is a wreck? A bomb blew up and you're half naked. You are not ready. How I many y'all know that's a curse? It's like, that's a curse. But if you are ready for the test or the fight or whatever it is, there's a blessing in being ready and Revelations keeps you ready. Because if you're not ready, I guarantee you there's a curse that comes with it. So he says just to read the book of Revelations, there's a blessing there. Because it just keeps you aware so that you aren't caught with your pants down or unprepared for a fight that you are destined to win. There is a wedding that you are destined to be at, but if, you, if the bride's not dressed, if she's not ready, then the, there's no banquet for that person. And, and, and the book of Revelations was given not as a, as a judgment book. It's not the wrath of God book. It's the consummation of your whole Bible. The 66 books of your Bible come to an end in the book of Revelations and show what it was all for and what it's supposed to be and what it will forever be for him and his people it is all the seeds of Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus all of them coming to fruition and the tree of revelations we sit and eat our fruit 
So people get weirded out by it or they get scared or they aren't ready with it. Listen, he comes, he shows up. Listen, there's a blessing if you read it. No doubt the church, there is some repentance that needs to happen. But there is somebody that can open the seals. And once he starts opening those seals and the second coming of Christ, and I want to show you the next three events really that, that are in your future and I believe are in my future. And, and there's a timeline and we've been taking the past few weeks just to look at some of the different signs some of the different things that we're seeing he said it'll be as it was in the days of lot and we took a sunday on that it'll be as it was in the days of noah we took a sunday on that so we're all seeing these different signs of the times that we're living in but the next one that's on the calendar uh, of events is is the rapture of the church and i want to just share a couple things with you about the rapture because lots of times people get confused or they don't understand what it is i'll, I'll say this the rapture in your bible uh the word rapture is not in there. Rapture just means to take away or actually to snatch. It just means this is where God is going to take his people out of here. And, and uh, a couple things. First thing uh, about the rapture is that, that he says in the twinkling of an eye, or in other words, it'll be completely unexpected. Nobody will be ready. Jesus said in Matthew, there'll be two in the field. One will be gone. One will stay. There'll be two grinding meal. One will be gone. One will be stay. That a thief is like a thief coming in the night. Suddenly, the rapture of the church, we will be out of here. We will be gone. And even though the word rapture is not in, in there, the, the word that it comes from is in there 14 times. And it's all different meanings, but it just means to take by force, to snatch, to take away, to rescue. How I many of you know we're going to be rescued? So, so all of these things are going to happen. It's going to happen suddenly. So I want to show you a couple verses just on the rapture. And I'm going to try to get through three different things this morning. The rapture, the tribulation, and the second coming of Christ. The rapture and the, and the second coming of Christ are not the same thing. So whenever you say, well, Jesus is coming back, that's different than the rapture. The rapture is, is, is going to be suddenly. When Jesus comes back, and I'll show you this in a minute, it says everybody will see it. The whole world will see when he splits the eastern sky and comes riding on that white horse with fire in his eyes and a sword in his hand, everybody going to know it, right? It's not going to be a surprise. It's not going to be a snatching away. No, no, that's totally different. The rapture and the second coming of Christ is, is two different events in Scripture. So, uh, and, and, and all the things we've been looking at up until this point, it says when you start seeing these signs, you know the second coming of Christ is near. I want you to know there doesn't need to be any sign for the rapture of the church. The rapture of the church could happen during this message right now that we are totally out of here. That, that, that's not the signs of the signs that we've been looking at is for the second coming of Christ. So if we're already into the signs of the second coming of Christ, how much closer are we to the rapture? The rapture is, is it, it could be any moment. The, the next thing I want you to know about the rapture is it's going to be vast. And that just means that about 70% of Americans are professing Christians. What would it be like if 70% of America vanished right now off, off of the planet? What would it look like? There's almost a 3 billion, I'll give you 2.6 billion Christians across the globe. Well, whenever all of them vanish, how many of y'all know the tribulation has begun because there will be lawlessness. It will be chaos. Half of your physicians gone. Half of your workforce gone. Half of your politicians. Hey, man. Uh, <laughs> Probably a bunch of them going to stay. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't get mad at me if you're a senator. Uh, but you can be like, I knew you'd still be here. It's like, half, of your, half of your law enforcement, gone. I mean, do you talk about the tribulation? It's just part of the Bible tells, and I'll show you this. It's just lawlessness, and things just run rampant. I mean, y'all know whenever half, the people start figuring out that half the people are gone, there's going to be a fight for stuff. There's going to be a fight for land. There's going to be a fight for power. There's going to be a fight for control. There's going to be a fight for everything. So whenever 2.6 billion people take off of this planet, that is the rapture of the church. It's going to be vast. And I'll show you this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 16. It says, the Lord himself is going to come from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call, a call of God. 
the believers who had died, or this is their bodies, are going to rise from their graves. And together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And what I want you to see is Jesus does not come down, we go up. We go up, we meet him in the clouds, in the air. We are the bride of Christ. He is rescuing us up. He's taking us up there. Another thing about the rapture is there is, it's debatable. Some people, uh, they believe that, that the rapture and the second coming are in the same event. They believe that, that the rapture will happen in the middle of the tribulation. I believe that, that we will be raptured before the tribulation. Nobody argues that it's going to happen. They just argue when it may happen. And how many of y'all know, I don't care. As long as I'm in the banquet, baby, I don't care. You know, I would really like it to be before because I don't want the big locusts that still that, that bite you. And I, I don't want the Antichrist and the mark of the beast. Like, I don't want to have to deal with all that. But if I wind up and I'm like, dang it, I was wrong. Here I am. And there's the dragon. Like, I, if, if that's the case, then I'll say I was wrong. You were right. Let's go to the banquet. Who cares, right? So some things ain't worth fighting about, baby. It's not that it, they all agree it's going to happen happen it's the I told you last week the number one topic of the New Testament is 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 salvation that's what your New Testament talks about the most the number two topic of 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 your New Testament is the second coming of Christ everybody agrees he will rapture the church and then he will come again when he does is is just kind of it's debatable one of the reasons I believe it'll happen before is because he said as it was in the days of Lot wrath judgment Judgment did not come until until Lot was out. He says, I can't bring judgment until Lot's out. Noah, once the boat closed, judgment came and he was saved. So I believe before judgment comes that we will be raptured out. Another reason why is we have authority with the name of Jesus. And I don't know how he's going to pull off what he pulls off if I'm still in the earth. Because I've got the name. I've got the blood. I've got the shield of faith. i got the armor. Like if i got all my weapons, then no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. So we're going to have a problem, right? So I believe the church, the salt, the preservative is going to have to be out. We've got to get out of here. And then judgment will come. That's my personal belief. And whenever, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. As long as I got a ticket in the banquet, we are good, right? So, so it's going to be vast. People debate about the different times and, and all that type of stuff. It's not in your Bible, the word, but there are, how many of y'all know there's other raptures in the Bible? The Bible says Enoch was taken for he pleased God. He never saw death. Elijah went up in a chariot that he never saw death. He was taken. He just, he raptured. So, so this is not a foreign concept. There's already been people that were raptured. But whenever we get raptured, we're all going together to meet him. And, and my last one that I've got, and I could give you a dozen, but I just tried to narrow it down, is that, is that we get new bodies. <laughs> well, <laughs> isn't that such good news? So good news, you know, it's like, First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 43, it says, our bodies are buried in brokenness, but they will be raised in glory. When Jesus came back, he had a glorified body. They were buried in weakness, but they will be raised in strength. They're buried as natural human bodies, but they will be raised as spiritual bodies. And just as there are natural bodies, there are also spiritual bodies. If you want to read that passage, there's actually about 20 verses that talk about how amazing your body's going to be. All the things you don't like about it right now. Too much of this and not enough of that. I don't know that the Lord's going to lift all of your problems. I don't know that he's going to tuck everything just the way that you want to, right? I, I, can't, I can't guarantee there's going to be a, a liposuction station that as you enter heaven, he just sucks away all of the nickels and all, the, all of the things that the boys and the girls don't like. I can't, I can't promise that, but we do get glorified brand new bodies, every cell full of the life and the vibrance of God in it. Give me some of that. 
after we're raptured, the seven years of tribulation start, and they'll put that up there. The first three and a half tribulation of years of the tribulation is what the Bible calls the beginning of sorrows. What's unique is in the sixth chapter of the book of Revelations, at the beginning of the tribulation, one-fourth of the earth's population will die. That there'll be the four horsemen that you all uh, thought was just a 1980s wrestling team. <laughs> There's more to the four horsemen than uh, your wrestling fantasies uh, as a child. The real four horsemen, the first one's on a white horse and, and he is the Antichrist. The second one is the red horse and then you have the black horse and then you have the pale horse. And, and again, you can read all this, the whole chapter of, of Revelation chapter 6. For the sake of time, I'll just read this. It says, when he ripped off the fourth seal, I heard the fourth animal cry, come out. And I looked a colorless horse or the pale horse, the sickly pale. And its rider was death and hell was close on its heels. And they were given power, the four horsemen were given power to destroy a fourth of the earth by war, famine, disease, and wild beasts. And this is what the Bible calls the beginning of sorrows. One fourth of the earth's population will be killed in various manners. And if you read and if you look at those, one of them is inflation of the price of goods will go up. How many of y'all know we're already seeing that? What you're seeing is just a birth pain. Russia wants Ukraine because Ukraine is the breadbasket of Europe. That's why they want them. They've already seized the ports of Ukraine. They're the number one exporter of wheat uh, on the planet right now, Africa is already suffering what's happening in Russia. So all of these things are birth pains, what you're seeing play out on the earth right now. The alliance of certain nations against the nation of Israel are all birth pains for what you're seeing. That These things are not just coming one day, we're living in them right now. And one of the horsemen is, and he tells you, he says that you'll for a, uh, for a day's wages, you get a very small amount of wheat. Work all day for a tiny amount. Some of you already feel like you work all day for a tiny amount just because of inflation, just because of the price of goods. That's just one of the horse. Not to mention the pale horse is sickness and disease. We just came out of COVID. We just came out of that. And through COVID, we saw that governments can shut down and that they can require you to have certain things to travel. They can require you to have certain things to purchase. You can't buy this if you don't have this. They're already implementing what will one day be the mark of the beast. You can't buy or sell without this mark. There are already currencies being established right now. And you can right now, in, in large cities in America, you can go into Whole Foods and scan your hand. I was just in an airport yesterday. They did retinal scans on me, facial recognition. All these things are setting up for what will one day be the horsemen that we're reading about today. But again, this is not doom and gloom, baby. This is a consummation of our redemption is drawing nigh. It's all coming to and end. So one fourth of the earth, everything's going to change. The, the, the Antichrist will rise up. This is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 7. It says, lawlessness is already at work secretly. It will remain secret until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way and then the man of lawlessness will be revealed. But the Lord Jesus will slay him from the breath of his mouth and destroy him by the splendor of his coming. I like that. They just throw, right, they throw that in there, right? You ain't got nothing to worry about. Just the breath of Jesus when he shows up for the second time will totally destroy the Antichrist. He says, this man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power, signs, and miracles. We all serve the Trinity of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. God the Father has Jesus, 
And Jesus represents the Father on the earth. The Holy Spirit is the person that leads everybody to Jesus. What the Antichrist will do is he'll set up not a holy trinity, but an unholy trinity. That there's three different people that will represent. There'll be Satan who will enter the Antichrist and he'll be used with the false prophet. The false prophet, like the Holy Spirit, will point everybody to the Antichrist. The Antichrist will be empowered by Satan himself how many of y'all know he's always wanted to be like God and he will have a form or a likeness uh, during the seven years of the tribulation that, that Satan will enter the Antichrist the false prophet will and he's going to set up his own unholy trinity and watch this it says here he'll have a miraculous power he will have the power to do miracles and many will think that's the messiah that's the Messiah right there. This is who we've been waiting for. And it tells you more. It says that this man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power, signs, and miracles. He will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction. Because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. For the first three and a half years of the tribulation, there will be two men... That, the, that are called the witnesses. Most believe that it is Enoch and it is Elijah, the two people that never died. And day and night, the Bible says that they will proclaim the wrath of God and they will preach 24-7, 365, warning of what's coming. After three and a half years, they will die. They will be killed, the Bible says, from the beast. Satan will enter the Antichrist. The Antichrist will be on the scene. And now you're entering into not what we were in the beginning of sorrows but after three and a half years the bible says we they'll enter into the great tribulation now you would think a quarter of the earth would be bad enough but he says no 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 nothing's like what happens once the antichrist gets full power for those three and a half years it'll be the worst thing that you could ever imagine and experience i don't have time to read it but if you want to read chapter 6 through 18 of the book of revelations none of it is good Unless you ain't there, baby, because I won't be here. I'm going to be somewhere else. I got to be somewhere else. I won't be here. I'm going to be up there, uh, and I don't have time to get into it. But Jewish weddings last seven days. While all of this is happening down there, we're going to have our own time with Jesus up there. And we're caught up with him in the rapture. But now what I want you to see is after the tribulations, the Bible says, now we come down. So we go up with him. We meet him in the air. But at his second coming, he's not coming back alone. We're with him. And now this is going to be the second coming of Christ. And people say, well, what happens to those during the tribulation that, that, that turned uh, to, to Christ during that time? And this is in Matthew chapter 24, verse number 12. During the tribulation, it says, lawlessness will abound. The love of many will grow cold, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached all over the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. The greatest revival of souls that has ever hit this planet will be during the tribulation. That God is going to unleash 144,000 disciples. How many of y'all know he did pretty good with 12? He not, he's not, now I'm not sending 12. I'll send 144,000 of them. They'll have signs, wonders, and miracles just like Peter, James, John, all those. They'll cover the earth and they'll go and they'll bring in the largest harvest of souls that the world has ever known. And during the tribulation, it's going to be terrible. And the Bible is very clear. He says that people will wish death, but it won't come. That they'll want death, but it won't come. But the, even in the middle of it, they'll call out to God and they'll hear the word of God. And by the millions and millions, they'll come into the kingdom. The Bible says that every Jew will be saved if they're alive during the tribulation, if they make it out. There's going to be a flood. So we're all wanting for a revival now. And I want revival now. But how many of y'all know if I never see it, it's coming no matter what. Revival's coming. God's going to do everything he can to rescue his people.
But the second coming of Christ is in Matthew chapter 24, verse number 29. He says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened. The whole earth will lose total. There will be no day or night. There will be no light, absolute darkness. The moon will not shed light and stars will begin to fall from the sky. Some of them, you have to suppose, would probably hit the earth. I don't know. The power of the heavens will be shaken. This is at the end of the tribulation. And then the Son of Man will appear in the sky. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn and beat their breasts and lament and anguish. They'll see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory in brilliance and in splendor. At the end of the seven years, everything's total darkness and chaos. The whole earth, everything is shaken. But then Jesus shows up. And unlike the rapture, whenever it was very, nobody knew it, it was a total surprise. When he shows up this time, and we, we're actually there with him, Revelation chapter 19, verse number 5, and this is the last one that I'll give you. Well, I've got one more besides that, so don't get mad at me. It is what it is. And from the throne came a voice that said, praise our God and his servants who all fear him. So this is after he's coming down now. This is his second coming. Tribulation is over. The earth is dark, everything. They all see him coming. Praise God, all of his servants and all who fear him from the least to the greatest. And then I heard what sounded like the shout of a vast crowd or the roar of a mighty ocean waves or the crash of loud thunder. Praise the Lord for the Lord our God, the almighty reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and let us give honor to him for the time has come for the wedding feast of the lamb and his bride has prepared herself. She's been given the finest of pure white linen to wear for the fine linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people. And the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the lamb. And he added, these are the true words that come from God. So you have these three events that are coming up. And one of the reasons why Jesus went viral is because he talked about, he said, there's coming a new heaven, there's coming a new earth, there's coming some things that are, cha that are changing, new governments. And they're like, when are we gonna, when are we gonna see all this? When are we gonna see? I can't tell you the seasons, I can't tell you the times, only the Father knows. But it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And the next thing that's happening is the rapture. And I trust every person in this room will be out on the first wave. I mean, I don't want to be on a second wave. Put me on a first boat, right? I don't, want to, I don't want to wait for the ferry. It's just I want to be on the ferry. Like, I want to be on the first load out of here. And for those three and a half years and then another three and a half years, there's going to be lawlessness and chaos and, and just it's going to be terrible. But when he comes back the second time, he says a couple things. Number one, he says, I'm bringing my reward with me. He's coming back, not empty-handed. He says, I'm bringing my reward. I'm bringing my judgment with me. He says, everybody on earth will see me coming. And now he's coming back this time with his bride. And how many of y'all know if you've ever been to a wedding, you know? Da -na, da -na, da -na, na -na. And everybody stands up and they all face their bride. And they're like, oh, she looks so pretty. She looks so pretty. And unless you don't like her, you're like, she looks fat. <laughs> I've heard some of y'all. I've done a bunch of weddings. I see y'all. It's like, ugh, they don't like her. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen some of your families. But, but after that, and then there's the pronouncements, you know, and now I present to you Jamie and Eric Ferris. Right? And Jamie and Eric Ferris, they walk out. Everybody claps. And Eric is so proud. He's got his wife on his hand, right? They walk into this. When Jesus comes back the second time, his bride will be on his hand. That he's going to meet us in the air during the rapture. When we come back, and then you have what the Bible calls the, bar, the battle of Armageddon, which is at the end of Revelations, which is very quick. It does not last long. How many of y'all know Jesus does not need any help? Maybe I told you he left the first time victorious. He comes back more victorious. I mean, it's, it's not even. I mean, the, the only thing that the enemy has is deception. He has no 
power, their fake miracles, their counterfeit power. He has no power. Jesus spoiled principalities. He already made a show of them openly, triumphant over them is what your Bible says. So all he has is deception. That's why in the battle of Armageddon, you think it's going to be like, oh, there's this big fight. No, baby, it's not a fight. He just told you his breath is enough. I mean, his breath. I mean, whenever God thumped him out of heaven, Jesus said, I saw him fall like lightning, like just boom, he's just out of there. I mean, his only power is the power to deceive, but how many of y'all know he's good at it? So don't underestimate his deception. Most of us live deceived just by the power that we have, who we are in Christ, what we can have. Most of us never enter the potential Christ paid for. He keeps us deceived because you are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You have been called. I mean, you, you are all of these things. We live beneath what he paid for. But when we come back with him that last time, then you have the battle of Armageddon and then you have thousand years. We enter into the millennia and all of that is good. There's a new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem with your new body. Come on, your new, new, new hips. Your new knees, yes, in Jesus' name. Some of y'all got double knee replacements. You're going to leave all that in the, in the casket, everybody. It's going to all be left here. No plastic in heaven. It's all God made, right? There's, thank God for oil and gas, but none of it's up in heaven. No plastic up there. There's no titanium, no plates, none of your fusions, all of that type of stuff. It's all, uh, all Jesus all the time. Last thing that I'll give you, because this is, this is important to us today because it's fun to look forward ahead but I told you the blessing of revelations is so that you'll be ready and when those guys said you men of Galilee why stand you here looking up Jesus who left will come again and receive you to himself it was Jesus that said don't walk around without power because I sent the Holy Spirit so that you'd be a witness I sent the Holy Spirit so that there would be something cooking in your inner man for eternity, not just a new boat or a new boyfriend. No, no, no. That's what the Holy Spirit's there. 2 Peter chapter 3 says, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers are going to come. They're going to mock the truth. They're going to follow their own desires. And they will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? For before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was first created. They deliberately forget that God made the heavens long ago by the word of his command. He brought the earth out of the water and surrounded it with water. He used the water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood. And by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for fire. They're being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. So you must not forget this one thing, dear friends, that a day is like a thousand years to the Lord and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise as some people think. He's being patient for your sake. He doesn't want anyone to be destroyed. He wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come expectantly as a thief. The heavens will pass away with terrible noise and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire. And the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along. How do you hurry it along? People. That's the only way. Why build another building? People. Vanity? God, no. More work, more time, more money. I like our little church. Y'all pretty people. Y'all pretty sweet. Most of you. As I look across here, some of y'all got the devil. (laughs) Just kidding. Why, Why do more? People. The only thing that hurries it along is people because the only thing he's waiting for is people soon as he gets the people the father will tell the son go get your bride if he gets it too soon 
many will be lost, and he doesn't want any to be lost. So he says he's not being impatient, he's being patient so that people have time to get right. So he said we should live holy lives, looking forward to the day, hurrying it along, and on that day he will set the heavens on fire, the elements will melt away in the flames. We're looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth that he's promised. It'll be a world filled with God's righteousness. And so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. And remember, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. How many of y'all glad he was patient with you? I'm telling you, I'm glad he's patient with me. If he would have came 20 years ago, man, I would, be, I would be a mess. I'm so glad he kept just being patient with me. While I'm running, he's pursuing. Right? I run faster, he pursues faster. Right? Finally, I give up running, and then, and then I just collapse onto him. Right? I'm just tired of running. Like, I'm tired of running from you. I'm tired of running from the call of God. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of running. But I ran hard and fast. Some of you are running. You're tired of running. I can tell you the best thing you can do is stop running and just turn. Follow and just turn into him. Say, all right, uh, I'll do what you want me to do. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll help you reach people. Being with the Romex this week, which is missionaries that we support, it's so it's refreshing to be around people that, uh, man, they, they could be doing a lot of other things, but they're passionate about people, reaching people. Our church is passionate about helping people connect to Jesus, grow in Jesus, lead for Jesus. We, we champion that a lot, and uh, we always will, and we are keep going forward because we occupy until he comes. That's what we do. Let me pray for you before you leave. God, we thank you for the, the opportunity. God, we thank you that you are a gracious, patient Father, that you don't wish that any would perish, but all would come to eternal life. And God, we thank you that Jesus, what he started, it's still spreading. Jesus is as viral today as he ever was. Statistically, I read a a statistic this week that said 2.7 million people get saved every year. That Jesus is still, his church is growing rapidly. People are finding what they're looking for in Christ. God, we thank you that you make us ready. You make us ready. And God, we say worthy. Worthy is the lamb that can open the seals. Worthy is the lamb that saved us, redeemed us, will rescue us. Worthy is the one. God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. If you're here, you're not far. I mean, you're not close to the Lord. You feel far from God. If you're here, you don't know Jesus. If you're here, you're not saved. You're not born again. Recognize we have several visitors here. Don't know what brought you to church. Maybe you're in town. You have a loved one playing in the game, and you, you're you here uh, because of them. Maybe you're here, you were invited. Maybe you just draw, driving by. Whatever got you here in this room right now, uh, God knows what he's doing, and he's waiting for you. He's not impatient. He's patient. If you find yourself in this room or watching online, you say, uh, I recognize the clock of eternity. The clock of my life is ticking. And I need to make sure my place in the kingdom of God is secure. I want to make sure that I'm out on the first wave, that if Jesus comes back I want to be ready when the rapture of the church comes back I'm ready if my heart stops beating today I want to be ready 
If you're here, you're under the sound of my voice and you feel like you're not ready for whatever reason, I'd love to pray with you, pray for you. I'm not trying to embarrass you, but want to make sure, listen, don't leave this room after everything you've heard. I mean, this is not the time to be shy or bashful. This is the time to say, I want my name written in the Lamb's book of life. I want to have confidence and assurance that heaven is my home, that Jesus is my Savior, that he is Lord. So I don't care if you're young or old, and maybe you feel like you've prayed this prayer before as a kid or, or whatever, but you need to make a new commitment. You just say, I recognize this, not just the season of humanity, but the season of my heart that I've tried other stuff and I've ran and it just hasn't worked. I need Christ in my life. If that's you, for the first time or for the 10th time, If you're here in this room, you just say, I need to recommit my life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I'd like to pray with you and pray for you. So as I look out across here, if you're watching online, you can get in the chat. But if you're here right now and you just say, I need to make a new commitment or first commitment to Jesus Christ, I'm asking you to raise your hand right where you are. See that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else, you just say, hey, include me. I want to pray. I pray with you. I want to pray for you. The conclusion of the service, we'll have altar workers down here at the front that can pray with you about other things. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else? Thank God for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is that fire that just says, hey, it's time to change. It's time to make some adjustments. Anybody else before we pray this morning? Thank God for his goodness. God, we love you. We worship you. We honor you. Everybody stand up on your feet right where you are. If you raise your hand, I'd love to pray with you, pray for you personally. If that's you, I'd ask you to come down here to the front. I'd like to, again, not trying to embarrass you, but I'd like to pray with you. If you raise your hand, you'd like me to pray with you, pray for you. There's something that happens when we step out. Something that happens. If you need prayer for anything, I'd love to pray with you, pray for you. Let's make a confession of faith. You yeah, come down here. I'll pray with you. Yeah, you can, you can go right there. Either way, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I just want to put my hand on you. I just like to, just to bless you, just to bless you. So if there's anybody else, here, come here. I just want to put my hand. Yeah, I just want to bless you. I just want to bless you. So sweet. Yeah, you take the blessing. You take the blessing. God, we thank you. Let's make a confession of faith. Everybody say, Lord Jesus, I believe, I confess all that I am, all that I have is in your hands my uh, my eternity my future is secure in the lordship of jesus christ i believe he came he lived he died he conquered death for me he arose and in me he lives forevermore i thank you my salvation is secure in Jesus Christ. Christ. Fill me me with the Holy Spirit Spirit. to keep eternity Eternity in my heart. In In Jesus' name. God, I thank you for your help. These people in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. 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 Let me bless all of you before we go. God, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you. God, we thank you that you use us, every person in this room, every person watching online, that you use us as a witness this week to your love and kindness, your tender mercies, and your forgiveness towards us. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, everybody said, hey, I know that it's Thanksgiving week. I want to say this. I want to say I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for all of you. Thank you for the opportunity to preach and teach and be a part of your life. Uh, we're available uh, for you. If you know somebody that don't have anybody to do Thanksgiving with, you should invite them. Say, hey, you want to come over for Thanksgiving? I can't cook very good, but my mama can, and uh, she, she's cooking. <laughs> so uh, uh, be friendly. Love people this week. How many of y'all know the holidays are not always the easiest time for people? People that have lost loved ones, kids that, that should be there that aren't there, spouses that have passed away or something like that. So uh, let the Lord uh, use you this week. Be a witness for him. All right, God bless you. You are dismissed.